Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mr. Zebron Ernest, a maths teacher at the Alimuntas in Islamic Seminary. Uh, today I'll be taking you through uh, uh, two different papers. We have paper one and paper two. I'll be showing my students on how to answer paper one. Uh, and when I say paper one, that means a paper which needs no calculator. And then I will take you to paper two, uh, paper two meaning that uh, it's a paper which you need to uh, attempt it without a calculator. All right, so this is paper one. I will try my level best not to use a calculator because it is uh, labeled paper one, okay? All right, so there we go. Uh, we have question number one. Uh, this question says that uh, a bottle of juice holds 1.5 liters. Ahmed pours all the juice into glasses. He pours 250 milliliters into each glass. Work out how many glasses Ahmed uses. So we have uh, two different units. One is liters, another one is milliliters. So you have to change liters into milliliters. Um, that uh, one liter equals to 1,000 milliliters. Now, how about 1.5 liters? This will be equal to 1.5 times 1,000 divided by one. So it will be 1.5 times 1,000. The answer you get, you're gonna need to divide by one. And this without a calculator will be uh, 1, 5, 1, 5, 0, 0, 0, three of them, but there is one decimal place. So you're gonna count uh, from the right one decimal place. So you're gonna cross this zero and you're gonna end up getting that 1.5 liter in the same way as 1500 milliliters, okay? Now, uh, he pours 250 milliliters into each glass, meaning one glass, one glass equals to 250 milliliters, 250 milliliters. Now, how about, uh, how about one five, one five zero zero milliliters? This will equal how many glasses? So you cross multiply, you're gonna end up getting something like uh, uh, 1,500 times one. The answer you get divided by 250. So you're gonna have uh, 1,500 times one. The answer you're gonna get, you have to divide by 250. And then you simplify this, uh, this, uh, zero will cross out to that and then you do by five this is 30 by five here this will be five and by five this will be one and this is six so you're gonna have uh six glasses so you're gonna have here 60 glasses yeah so that is your answer and then you go to uh question number two here is a road sign in the United States of America that Chicago is 10 miles. Now the question is draw a ring around the distance in kilometers that is closest to 10 miles. Okay, so you're gonna need to change, uh, you're gonna need to change uh, 10 miles into kilometers. And this will be 10 miles into kilometers. We're gonna need to multiply this by, because miles, uh, miles are bigger than kilometers. So we're gonna need to multiply by eight over five, okay? So approximately, uh, you just do 10, 10 multiply by eight over five. This is um, an approximate figure, eight over five. And when you simplify this, we're gonna end up getting two times eight, two times eight, which equals to 16. So we may say that 10 miles, 10 miles is approximately equal to, is approximately 16 kilometers, okay? So uh, that is closest to 10 miles, you're gonna put a ring around 16 kilometers because 10 miles is approximately uh, 16 kilometers. Write down the value of uh, square root of two to five. Square root of two to five, meaning which number multiplied by itself gives you two to five. So the first possibility is 15 times 15. This will end up giving you 15 times 15. This will end up giving you two to five. 
another possibility will be when you take another possibility will be when you take negative 15 times negative 15. This will end up giving you the same number. Negative 10 negative is positive, and 15 to 10, 15 is 225. Okay, so the square root of 225 is in two possibilities. It is either you can have 15 or you can have negative 15. The reason being 15 times 15 will give you 225, and negative 15 times negative 15 will also give you the same number, 225. So write down the value of square root of 225. So the answer is either 15 or negative 15. So you can uh, do either way. So, I mean, any of these two. Uh, that is B, draw a ring around the best estimate of the cube root, cube root, cube root of 100. Which number, which number out of this? Can it be 3.2? We don't know. Can it be 4.6? Can it be 10? Can it be 33? Meaning that when you take this number, 3.2, multiply by itself three times, you must get 100. That is, that is what it means by cube root of 100. Okay? So what I want to do is that uh, I'm going to ignore the decimal point. I'm going to ignore the decimal point and getting, uh, ignore the decimal point here, and you're going to have Three. Now take this three times three times three and see if you're going to get 100 or something closer to 100. This gives you 37. So 3.2 is very less. Try 4.6. Now these are going to ignore the decimal point and try four times four times four because I'm looking for which number, which when multiplied by itself three times are going to end up getting something equal to 100 or something close to 100. Okay, now four times four, this is 16 times four. This will give you uh, something like 64. Now 64 is closer to 100. Try 10. 10 times 10 times 10. Can, give, uh, can it give you something closer to 100? No, this will give you something like 1000, which is so way far from 100. How about 33? Now 33 is definitely not possible because even 10 is not possible. So the cube root of the cube root of 100 is basically uh, the best estimate to the cube root of 100 is basically 4.6 because when you take a whole number four multiply by itself uh, three times you're going to end up getting 64. Now 64 is closer to 100. When you take 10, 10 times 10 times 10 is going to give you 1,000, which is so way far from 100. Okay, the next question is find a fraction halfway between two over three and five or six. Okay, now there's this vocabulary here, there's this vocabulary here, which says, which says halfway. To find a fraction which is halfway between two over three and five or six, uh, a fraction halfway between these requires you to take the same fractions like this, try to add them, Try to add them, then the answer you get, you're going to divide by two. Okay. So the first step is to take two over three plus five over six, and then the answer you get, you're going to need to divide by two. Okay. So what I'm going to do, step number one is to first take, is to first take two over three plus five over six. This will give me LCM of three and six is six. Six divided by three is two times two is four. 6 by 6 is 1 times 5 is 5. So this will give me 9 over 6. Okay, if you simplify this, you can end up getting by 3, this is 3, by 3, this is 2. So you're going to end up getting 3 over 2. Now, 3 over 2 should be divided by 2. That is what we discussed here. So this is a fraction, and this is a whole number. So keep it over 1 and do reciprocal. This will be 3 over 2 times. One goes up, two goes down, and then you multiply three times one is three, two times two is four. So the fraction which is halfway, the fraction which is halfway between two or three and five or six, that fraction is three or four. All right, so the next, uh, the next question will be, okay, this question here. Uh, this question requires you to, just understand the powers of 10. So uh, 10 power two, 10 square. This means 10 times 10 
and this gives you a hundred and it's something which you can see here and this hundred is what we call an ordinary number now the question comes which power which power is representing an ordinary number 10,000. So what you definitely do is simply count how many zeros you have in 10,000. Just count how many zeros you have in 10,000. You have one, two, three, four. So the power of 10 will be 10 to the number of zeros, which is four. So the answer here will be 10 to the power of four. How about 10 power five? What will be the ordinary number for that? 10 to the power of five, an ordinary number will be 10 times 10, five times. And you're gonna end up counting how many zeros you have. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you do one times one times one times one times one, you end up getting the same thing. So 10 to the power of five will be equal to 10,000. So an ordinary number here will be 10,000. Uh, okay, work out this question. We have 1.2, we have 1.2 divided by 0 0.01. Okay, now there are so many methods that you can use to work out this. What I'm gonna do is convert 1.2 into fraction. So I'm gonna have 1.2 as a fraction will be 12 over 10 divided by, convert 0 0.01 into a fraction. This will be the same thing, one over 100. And then do reciprocal of this. You're going to have 12 over 10 multiplied by 100 goes up and then one goes down. And then check across this 10 can cross this zero here. Yeah? And you end up getting 12 times 10. And the answer becomes 120. That is the answer for that. Uh, the next part is uh, this question here 0 0.036 times 10 to 5. So you're gonna have 0 0.036 times 10 to the power of five. Okay, now we have done this, that 10 to the power of five is equal to 10 times 10, five times. And this 10 to the power of five will equal to 10,000. You have one, two, three, four, five zeros. So 10 to the power of five is 10,000. Then you're gonna do 0 0.036 times 10,000. And you end up counting uh, that uh, 0 0.036, this number here, this number here is three decimal places. So you're gonna have 36 times one, you're gonna have 36 like that. And then you're gonna have these zeros, I'm just copying I'm just copying the same thing, 0036, but without putting a decimal point. And then these zeros, these five zeros, keep them here next to each other. So you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five. Then count the number of decimal places you have. You have three decimal places, so count three decimal places from your right-hand side going left-hand side. So you have one, two, three, and the answer will be three, six, zero, 3600.000. Zero, zero. You can delete all of this, and the answer becomes 3600. Zero, zero. Okay? I hope that is clear. And then you do uh, 470 times 10 for negative 2. Okay? Uh, I can remove this. And then do 470 times 10 to the power of negative two. Okay, now take care of this. When you have a negative two, when you have an exponent of negative two, simply write it as a fraction like this. You're gonna have 470 times 10 to the power of negative two becomes a fraction which is one over 10 to the power of two. So you, when you have a negative index, when you have a negative exponent, or you have a negative power, what you definitely do, just write this, just write this power as a fraction. Once you write this power as a fraction, then the exponent changes from being negative to positive. Okay, and then you continue. Uh, this will be 470 times one over, now 10 to the power of two means 100. 
and you're gonna cross out this zero and this zero, and you have 47 times one, this will be 47 over 10. And this becomes 4.7. This becomes 4.7, okay? Now, the next part will be this question here. Yeah? The next part will be this question here, yeah? which is, uh, Two divided by 10 to the power of negative four. Okay. So you have you have two divide by 10 to the power of negative four. Remember what I said when you have a negative exponent or when you have a negative index, or this power is negative. What you do, you make it positive by writing a fraction of it. So this will be two divided by, write a fraction of 10 power negative four. This will be one to the, uh, this will be one over 10 to the power four. So when you write a fraction, when you write this negative power as a fraction, this exponent changes from negative to positive. And then keep going. This will be two divided by one over 10 to the power four will be uh, four zeros. So you're gonna have, uh, 10 power 4 will be uh, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. So uh, let me check. 10 to the power 4 will have all these, meaning 10,000. How about this one here? 10 power 5. This one is, uh, this is 100,000, I guess. Let me check if we went correctly. Okay, so 10 power 5, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 10 power 5, we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, all right? And meaning 100,000, not 10,000. I'm sorry for that. Uh, can I see if we made a, a silly mistake here? No. Let's let me check up there. I think we don't have any silly mistakes. Okay. All right, so the silly mistake has been corrected. So let us proceed. Uh, so 10 to the 5 will have 100,000 uh, 100, and not 10,000, okay. Uh, keep going, so we have this. All right, so let us proceed from here. This will be two times the reciprocal of that, it will be 100, I mean, it will be 10,000 divided by one, and this will be two times uh, 10,000, this will give you 20,000. Okay, so the answer for two divided by 10 power negative four, the answer will be 20,000. Right, so, so far so good, so let us proceed. Uh, we have the next question here. Yeah? Uh, which says 7.4 7 plus which number equals 3.1? 7.4 plus which number equals 3.1? So what you definitely do here is just take 7.4, put it on this side, and therefore you're gonna have 3.1 minus 7.4. So 3.1 minus 7.4, uh, this number, this number is, smaller than this number. So when you take a smaller number minus a bigger number, the answer will be negative. Now, if you want to find out how much is that negative, then do 7.4 minus 3.1, you end up getting 7.4 minus 3.1, you end up getting something like, uh, this is three, this is four. So the missing number here is negative 4.3. The missing number here is negative 4.3. Uh, how about this question here? We have 9.4 minus negative 5.7. So from here, you're gonna have negative and negative is positive. So you have 9.4 plus 5.7. This negative times negative makes positive. And then you end up getting 9.4 plus 5.7. And this will be giving you, if you arrange this vertically, you end up getting four plus seven is 11, carry one. 
and this nine plus five is 14. So this will be 15 and 15.1. If you don't know how, just set these numbers vertically like this, 9.4 plus 5.7 and do vertically like this. Four plus seven is 11, Cal one. Uh, one plus nine is 10 plus five, this will be 15. And then keep a decimal point there. And the answer becomes, the answer becomes 15 point, 15 point one. So here, the answer will be 15 point one. Right, so far so good. And then the next question will be uh, this question, yeah? The point P has coordinates. So you have point P, coordinates is two comma nine. And the point Q is negative three comma nine. Find the distance PQ. Now distance PQ is first check the coordinates. Here you have the number before a comma belongs to X. The number before a comma belongs to X. So here you have two values of X. This is the first value of X, which is two. And you have the second value of X, which is negative three. Now, if this is the first value of X, if this is the first value of X, automatically this becomes the first value of Y. And since this is our, the second value of X, automatically this value becomes uh, the second value. Of y. Now you can see that the values of Y here are the same, okay? So for finding the distance, when the values of Y are the same, you cross them out because those values of Y will not help you for the distance because they're the same. Now you're gonna end up remaining with two and negative three. Now, which number, which number between two and negative three is bigger than the other? You find that two is bigger than negative three and therefore the distance, and therefore the distance will be the large number will be the large number minus the small number. Now here, the large number is two minus the small number here is negative three. Now, when you do this calculation, you end up getting negative times negative is positive. So you end up getting two plus three and the answer becomes five. Now this five is what we call the distance between P and Q. I'm gonna repeat here, uh, I'm gonna repeat on this part because it's very, very important. Okay. If the question is to find the distance between P and Q, you can see that here, the values of Y are the same. Now, since the values of Y are the same, then you're gonna use the values of X because the values of Y are the same. And therefore you need to cross out these values of Y because they're the same. And then you end up getting two and negative three. Now between these two numbers, between these two numbers, one is two, another one is negative three, which number is bigger than the other? You find that two is bigger than negative three. And therefore the distance in that case will be equal to the large number, the large number minus the small number. Okay, now in this case, the large number here is two, minus the smaller number here is negative three. Now, everybody knows that when the two negative signs are following each other, what you simply do is to multiply the negative signs. So negative to negative will be making it a uh, positive, and then you're gonna have two here, and then you're gonna have three there. So what is two plus three? The answer is five. Now this five is what we call the distance between P and Q. I think that is very clear. Then let me go to the next part. All right, so the next part is this question here. The next part is this question here. Here is a list of numbers. Find the largest possible number that can be made when the two numbers from this list are multiplied together. Okay, or uh, you can see that which, uh, which two of these numbers should be chosen so that when we multiply them, you end up getting the largest positive number, the largest positive number. So what we simply do is to take these numbers, which are very negative, negative seven, negative five, and multiply them, you're gonna end up getting a large positive number. 
negative times negative is positive. Seven times five is 35. You find that the two post, I mean, the two numbers from this list, which when you multiply them, you're gonna end up getting the largest positive number. Those numbers are negative seven and negative five, okay? Right, now, which other two numbers, which when subtracted, it ends giving you the largest positive number. In that case, you're gonna take this number here, which is six, minus this number here, which is negative seven. If you do that, you end up getting a very largest positive number. And this will be six, negative, the negative is positive. Now six plus seven will give you 13. So, uh, Find the largest post. Uh, find the largest post positive number that can be made when two numbers from this list are multiplied together. Okay, so the largest possible number. Sorry for this. The largest positive number which you can make when the two numbers from this list are multiplied. The largest positive number will be thirty-five. Will be thirty-five. And the numbers to be used will be negative seven and negative five. When the two numbers are subtracted, what is the largest positive number? The largest positive number here will be 13. And what are those two numbers which you're supposed to subtract? You're supposed to subtract seven, uh, six and negative seven. When you do six minus negative seven, you end up getting 13. So there we go. Uh, the next question, the next question here is estimate a cube root of 120, a cube root of 120 to the nearest whole number. To the nearest one. Okay, the idea uh, the idea for this question is that uh, uh, the cube root of 120, the cube root of 120, meaning uh, which number, which number, when you multiply by itself three times, will end up giving you 120. Okay, so you try figuring out. Suppose you start with a number one. When you multiply one by itself three times, do you get something closer to 120? I think no, because one times one times one, you end up getting one, okay? Now keep going. If you go to two, for example, two times two times two, are you going to get something sounding like 120 or something closer to 120? The answer is no, because two times two times two, that is eight, okay? Now jump from two to three, for example. Okay, skip three, try say four. Okay, four times four times four, because you are looking for which whole number, which when you multiply by itself gives you 120 or something closer to 120. So four times four times four, this will end up giving you 64. A bit, we are closer to 120, but let us try another number. Let's try, uh, go slowly here, don't jump six, don't skip five, okay? Jumping to six, no, go slowly here because we, we are closer to 120. Okay, try five times five times five. Will it give you 120? Let us see, five times five is 25. Times five, this is 125. Wow, we are closer to 120, very close. Try six, six times six is 36. Times six again, you're gonna have 36 times six. This will be 36, this will be 216, no. No, this is so much. So the whole number here, which when you multiply by itself gives you 120 or something closer to 120, that number will be equal to five. That number will be equal to five. So estimate a cube root of 120 to the nearest whole number. So a cube root of 120 will be equal to something equal to five, and that is nearest to the whole number, okay? The next question is x to the power of six times x to the power of three. So x to the power of six times x to the power of three, this is the concept of laws of indices, which says that when you are multiplying same bases, when you are multiplying same bases, you maintain the same base, which is x, and what happens to the indices, these indices will be added. So meaning six plus three. And what is six plus three? The answer will be X to the power of nine. So X to the power of six times X to the power of three, the answer will be X to the power of nine. This is your answer, okay?
Okay, that is your answer. Now the question will be, what if it was sub, uh, what if it was divided by? You have x power six, for example, divided by x to the power three. How could you do this? Well, for division, we do the same procedure, but we're gonna need to subtract these indices. Meaning, when you are dividing two bases, which are the same, you're gonna maintain the same base, but what, uh, what happens to the indices, you're gonna take this index here, which is six, minus this index here, which is three. So you end up getting x to the power of three, if it was division. But since it was uh, uh, multiplication, then you end up getting x to the power of nine, all right? I think that helps, and then we are good to go. Uh, the next part is uh, this question here. Cheney starts with a number. Cheney starts with a number, which we don't know. Okay. So the start is, the start is a number. What a number is this? We don't know. Now he squares his number. Okay, square this number. This number has to be squared. Square that number. Okay, after squaring this number, the answer should be 144. Now the question is, the question is, can you write down the two possible values of the number that chain starts with? Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I have to work on the reverse way. I have to work on the reverse. I have to work on the reverse of this function machine. So when I reverse this, this will be 144. I'm reversing this, this function machine. But when I reach here, I will, I will not write square again. Instead, I'm gonna do the reverse of squaring, which is square root. Square root. And then I'm gonna get that number that chain is starting with. Okay, so square root. What is the square root of 144? Square root means I have to think of which number, I have to think of which number, which one multiply by itself gives you 144. That number is 12. Is this the only number? No, this is not the only number. I can also, I can also think of negative 12. Why not? This is 12. Let me see. This is 12. 12 times 12. Does it give you 144? Yes, it gives you 144. How about negative 12? Okay, negative 12 times negative 12. Does it give you 144? Yes, because negative times negative is positive. 12 times 12 is 144. So the two possible numbers is either 12 and negative 12. These are two possible numbers, which when you square, let us try 12 square, meaning 12 times 12 is 144 tick. How about negative 12 square? Negative 12 square means negative 12 times negative 12, you get 144? Yes, you get 144. So the two numbers are negative 12 and the, the two numbers are negative 12 and positive 12. These are the two numbers. These are two possible values of the number that chain is starting with. Okay, so the next question will be, uh, the next question will be this question. All right, so let us see this question. This question is known as a stem and leaf diagram. And uh, a stem and leaf diagram requires you to be able to read the scale, meaning, I mean, to read the key, meaning one slash six, that is 16 seconds. So this is not six, according to the key. This is not six, rather is 16. And this is not eight, instead it is 18. And this is not nine, Instead, it dies 19. And also, this is not one, rather, it's 61 according to the key. And this is not seven. Instead, that should be six or seven. Okay, so once we know how to read the numbers here, then let us see the question. Work out the median time. The median means middle number. Median means middle number. But it is a middle number when all the numbers are arranged from the smallest to the largest. Okay, so the median time. 
I'm gonna read all these numbers and then choose which one will be the middle number. Okay. Starting from here, this number will be 16, comma, 18, comma, 19, comma, 20, comma, 22, comma, 25, comma, again 25, comma, then 28, comma, then I have 30, comma, 32, comma, 35, comma, 37, comma, where 30, 32, 35, 37, then I have 42, comma, 44, then 48, keep going, so we try to squeeze them, okay, All right, 48, so we have 48 there, we have 54, And then we have 56, let, let me put it here. 56, then we have uh, 61, then we have 67. Now the first thing you have to check, are these numbers listed from smallest to the largest? Yes, of course, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 25. So all these numbers are already arranged from smallest to the largest. Then you can cross out to find your middle number. So I cross the largest, which is 67. Then I cross the smallest, keep going. Cross the small, I mean, you cross the largest and then you cross the smallest until you get the middle number. Okay, so you cross 56 and you cross 19. So you keep crossing the largest and the smallest, largest, smallest, keep going until you get the middle number. So I have uh, here, the, the largest is 54, can't say that and the smallest is 20. So you cancel one number from the right and you cancel another number from the left. So cancel one number from the, uh, from the right hand side and then you cancel another number from the left. So keep going quickly, 42, 25, 37, 28, 35, then 30. So what is your middle number? Let me check. I've cancelled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from the left hand side, and I've cancelled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have to cancel equal numbers from left and right. So the middle number here will be 32. And that is your median. What if you end up getting two numbers in the middle? When you end up getting two numbers in the middle, then you have to plus those two numbers, add those two numbers, and then the answer you get divided by two. And that will be your median. Okay, here, uh, I equal across the time in a second that it takes, okay. Now the question is, what about the range? Okay, the range is, uh, range is simply uh, the largest number, the largest number minus the smallest number, okay. And if you look at this question carefully, if you look at this term, it's very easy to figure out the largest number from here, and it's very easy to figure out the smallest number. So uh, the largest number will be not seven, will be six or seven, six or seven, minus the smallest number here will be not six, will be 16, okay? So if you do this calculation, you end up getting 64 minus 16, this is, one, and this is five. So range is 51. So range is 50. That's so have six, have seven there, have six there. So 67 minus 16, you have 51 is your range. Right, so the next question will be this question here. Uh, A with coordinates 5,8 and B with coordinates 3, negative two are two points on a coordinate grid. C is the midpoint of AB. C is the midpoint of AB. Work out the coordinates of C. Okay, so you have point A with coordinates 5,8, and we have point B with coordinates 3, negative 2. Now the question is C is the midpoint. So if you have something like a line, 
if you have something like a line connecting these two points, now C is the midpoint. C is at the midpoint of this line. So that is your C. Now, can you work out the coordinates of C? Can you find what is the value of X for C and what is the value of Y for C? Can you work out the coordinates of C? Now, to work out the coordinates of the midpoint, we have the formula which says midpoint, midpoint equals two. X1 plus X2, the answer you get divided by two, put a comma, and then Y1 plus Y2 divided by two. This is the formula for the midpoint, which you have to know. Okay, then what, is, what are these X1, X2? X1, X2 are these numbers here, you label them. A number before a comma belongs to X, a number before a comma belongs to X. So you have the first value of X and you have the second value of X. This is where you have the X1 and the X2, okay? So what is X1? X1 is five plus, what is X2? X2 is three, five plus three. The answer you get, you need to divide by two. And then you have Y1, Y2. Now Y1, Y2 comes by default. Since this is X1, automatically this H becomes Y1. Since this number is X2, automatically this number here becomes Y2. So you have the Y1 and the Y2 by default, okay? So Y1 will be eight plus Y2 will be negative two. The answer you get, you need to divide by two, okay? So I'm gonna shift this calculation here. Five plus three is eight. Five plus three is eight. Eight divided by two is four, comma. Now this one, you have to do a small calculation. Positive times negative is negative. Positive times negative is negative. So you have negative here. And you have eight, you have eight, and you have two there, over two. Now this I have to explain again. If you have two signs following each other, what you do, Take those two signs, multiply them. Now you have positive and negative, this will be negative. And you're gonna have eight minus two, eight minus two is six, six divided by two is three. So the answer here will be four comma, eight minus two is six, six divided by two is three. So the answer here will be four, there's a comma there. And here you're gonna end up writing three. This is your middle point. Okay, the next question is, B, B is the midpoint of AD. B is the midpoint of AD, okay. Go back here, this is A, let me put it here. This is A with coordinates, with coordinates 5,8. And we have, B is the midpoint of AD. Okay, so we have A here, and you have somewhere here a D. But as you can see, we don't have point D here. So I'm gonna assume that uh, point D has coordinates X comma. But they're telling you that B is the midpoint. point. If we have a line, if we have a line joining these two points, if you have a line joining these two points, now B is the midpoint. point. B is at the middle, B is here. But what are the coordinates of B? The coordinates of B are three comma negative two. The coordinates are three comma two, three comma negative two. So since B is the midpoint, since B is the midpoint, then we have to figure out, we have to figure out what is the value of X here and what is the value of Y. Now, since B, since point B is the midpoint, then we have to do something mental. We know that the midpoint, like as I said earlier here, the midpoint is X1 plus X2 divided by two. Now, if you can see this one, here we are given the midpoint. Here we are given the midpoint already, okay? But we know that when I take five plus X, when I take five plus X, when I take five, plus X, the answer I get, I divide by two, 
that should be equal to three because three is your midpoint. That should be equal to three. That is what it means. So you need to multiply by two here to find the value of x. This two and two will cancel. You need to multiply by two here. So we end up getting five plus x equals two six. So which value of x, which number here, which number? Five plus which number equal to six? That number is x equal to one, meaning five plus one equal to six. So that number here should be equal to one. Put a comma. Okay, now uh, you are given the midpoint, point, which is this one, meaning when I take eight plus y divided by two, that should give you negative two. So eight plus y, the answer I get, I should divide by two. That should be equal to this negative two because this is the midpoint. So I have to multiply by two, multiply by two. This will be eight, eight plus y equals two. Negative two times two is negative four. Okay. So eight plus y equals to negative four. What is the value of y? It's either you can use mentally or you can just take this positive eight, put it on this side, you end up getting y equals to negative four. Now when positive eight goes there, it will be minus eight. And this will be y equals to negative four. Okay, so the missing number here will be negative 12. So the missing here, the missing number here will be one comma negative 12. So let us try to check if our calculation went correct. If you are given the midi point, what is the formula we're gonna to use to find midi point? Midi point is x1 plus x2, the answer you get divided by two. Let us try to check. What is five plus one? Five plus one is six. What is six divided by two? You get three, which is this number. Right. How about y? Since this is the midi point, then you're gonna do eight plus negative 12. What is eight plus negative 12? Eight plus negative 12 is the same way. You have eight plus negative 12. This is the same way as eight. Positive to negative is negative. So this is the same way as eight minus 12. This is negative four. Now this negative two, uh, negative four has to be divided by two because that is how the midpoint works. Now negative four divided by two you end up getting negative two, which is this number here, okay? I hope now that is clear. Now, let me continue. Uh, complete this statement using consecutive whole numbers. Square root of 40. Square root of 40 lies between which two whole numbers? Okay, let us see. Square root of 40 means I have to think of which number which when I'm at by itself, I'm gonna end up getting 40. Okay, let me try starting with say one. One times one, you get 40, no, that is equal to one. How about two? Two times two is four. Skip some few numbers. Uh, try say uh, five times five, what do you get? You get 25, at least it's closer to 40. Now try six, six times six, this is equal to 36. Okay, now this is, six times six is far better because 36 is close to 40, okay? Now try seven. Seven times seven, that will give you 49. Now that is above 40, there you stop. So it means that the score of 40 is between, the score of 40 is between, six is between six and seven, why? Six times, th uh, six times six is 36. Seven times seven is 49. And that should be equal to 40, you see? So the square of 40 lies between six and negative seven, lies between six and seven. Why, why six? Because six times six is 36. 36 is closer to 40. Why seven? Because seven times seven is 49. And the number here should be equal to 40. So that number, I mean, the square of 40 lies between six and seven. So the number which you're gonna put here is six and the number which you're gonna put there is seven, okay? 
I hope that is clear. All right, so the next part will be, the next one, uh, the next part will be this question, yeah? Uh, this question says, this question uh, says, look at this list of numbers. So we have negative eight, negative three, negative one, zero, seven, ten. Okay, now what is the question? Can you write down all the numbers from this list that satisfy the inequality negative three is less than X is less or equal to seven. Uh, this inequality suggests that uh, you should choose the numbers from this list, which are between the negative three, which are between negative three and seven. But mind you, those numbers which are between, those numbers which are between negative three and seven, seven has to be included in the list. Why? Because here it says less or equal to seven. So even seven should be equal, I mean, even seven should be in a list, okay? So how about negative three? Is the negative three be part of our answer? No, the answer is no. Because negative three is bounded by, look at this. This is negative three is less than X, is less or equal to seven. So when they say equal to, they mean even seven should be here in the list. What are, other numbers which are between negative three and seven. Those numbers are we have zero, we have negative one. How about negative three? Should you put it there? No, because here they say less than negative three has to be less than that number you put. What if they could have said less than or equal to? Now, because there is any equal, because there is something like equal to the negative three should be part of the list. Now, because this symbol is, is, is silent, this symbol is silent, it does not have equal to, so negative three should not be in the list. So the numbers which are between negative three and seven, including seven themselves, will be negative one, will be zero, will be seven. Okay, I want 10, no. Uh, I want negative three, no. I want negative three, eight, no. Okay, so these are the only numbers, All right? So we have write down the inequality shown on the number line below. When you see this symbol, when you see this symbol, uh, there is a difference between this symbol and when it is shaded. When it is shaded, when it is, when it is shaded, it means or it suggests something less than or equal to. Why am I talking about something like less than? Why not greater than? Because my arrow is heading to the left-hand side. My arrow is heading to the left-hand side. Now, since the arrow is heading to the left-hand side, the inequality or the symbol to be used will be less than. Now, why am I not saying less than or equal to? I'm not saying less than or equal to because this circle is unshaded. This circle here is not filled. If it is not filled, if it is not filled, then the symbol to be used is less than. Why less than? It is because the arrow is heading to the left hand side. So the, this letter here goes, something. Uh, this letter here goes here, and the symbol stays in between. Now, this number you see, this number you see is what we keep there. And the inequality, and the inequality is radius x is less than one. Why x? x is any number which is less than one. Now, that number can be zero. That number can be negative one, can be negative two, can be negative three, can be going, can be going to infinity. So that is why in short we write x should be something less than one. What if, what if the, the question is uh, having something we call a filled circle? What if they fill? What if they fill this circle? This, uh, this circle is filled. When it is filled, immediately, when it is filled, immediately, everything will be the same, but what we do is putting something we call less than or equal to, because that is filled. 
Now, since this is not filled, then we end up writing like that. Okay. Since this circle is not filled, I hope that is clear. Right. So we're going to have this. And there we go. So the next question is question number 17. Okay. Question 17. Here is a function. The function says x maps onto 10x plus 2. Now, in order to understand this clearly, I'm going to convert this mapping. I'm going to convert this mapping into what we call a function machine. Now, this x is becoming to be an input. Now, this input x has been multiplied by 10. So here, I'm going to say multiply by 10. What is what is x times 10? x times 10 is 10x, OK? Then after multiply by 10, then I'm going to go ahead adding 2. Then after adding 2, then I'm going to have my output there. So this is how we convert, this is how we convert a normal mapping into a function machine. OK, what is this 3, for example? This 3 is input. Now take this input three, put it there in the function machine. So you're gonna have three, multiply by 10 is 30, add two is 32. So that is that. How about seven? Okay, seven is your input. So take this seven, input it in this function machine. So you're gonna have seven multiplied by 10 is 70, add two is 72. So that is correct. How about four? Check this four is your input, multiply by 10, you're gonna get 40. Add two, you're gonna have 42. Now this, you need to reverse this. To answer this question, you need to reverse a function machine. Now, how do we reverse that function machine? Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to the function machine and start reversing this. This has to be reversed. How do we reverse that? Okay. We're gonna start with our output as usual. So output starts there. And then when you reach here, this will not be add two instead it will be minus two and the next one will be instead of saying multiply by 10 this will be divide by 10 and there you're gonna get this is your output and then you're gonna find out what your input will be okay so now how do we do this okay this two two is your output so put two there now what is two minus two that is zero and zero divided by 10 that is zero, okay? So the missing number here is zero. Now what if I want to check if zero gives me two, then you're gonna use this, this we call forward function machine. You're gonna use this forward function machine, which is zero. Zero will be put here as your input. So zero times 10, zero times 10 is zero. Zero plus two, zero plus two is two. And that is why you can see that, all right? So I'm gonna stop here and then I'm gonna con I'm gonna continue in my next video. So stay tuned. Bye bye for now. Zabron here. Bye.